Yo, I'm Mnemonic. If you're watching this, more than likely you use BandLab and you want your vocals to sound professional. At the very least, sound good in the mix. In this video, I'll be recording vocals and then mixing those vocals only using BandLab and the built-in effects. Now, to show you what's possible with a very simple setup and hopefully inspire you, maybe motivate you to make more music. First, I'll be recording vocals directly into my phone with no additional equipment attached, aside from a pair of headphones. Now to kick things up a notch and get a much better sounding vocal, I'll be using my Shure SM48S microphone and then the BandLab Link Digital Audio Interface. Links for both of those are in the description. And if you're gonna go shopping, might as well check out one of those links because it's gonna be the same price, but it helps me and I greatly appreciate your support. I already have a beat that I made using the BandLab Looper. Love that thing. And then I also have some lyrics written that are conveniently stored in the lyrics tab in the BandLab Mix Editor. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's do this. Hello, vocal check solo. Oh no, where'd the beat go? Bring it back. New track on Band Lab, getting levels on point. You Monic, dropping knowledge for the whole joint. Easily I equalize, the truth is in the balance. You sing, you rap, open up the app and use it. Ha! 2020 getting lit. Make more music is the mission to accomplish. The mountain we will summit. No boundaries, tell your story through the frequencies. Hit record and follow me. Woo! That was a good take. I'm just gonna roll with that. Now, I did need to adjust for latency a little bit. If you don't know how to do that, you can check out this video. Let's get into the effects. To do that, you just tap the track icon. For this, it's the green microphone. And then the effects section is accessed with the effects button right here. And I've made two presets, saturated smartphone and echo and enhance. The first thing that I started off with on both presets is a noise gate. Now, what that does is eliminate some of the noise. And the way that it does that, at a certain threshold, it will allow the sound to come through, but if it's too quiet, then it'll just cut it off completely. And a note for that, you just wanna adjust the threshold because if you do it too much, then it'll start cutting out the vocal. Oh no, where'd the beat go? Bring it back, new track, band lab, getting level song point. See how it sounds all choppy? So I'm gonna lower that about right there, sounded good to me. Next, I added a simple EQ3. Hello, vocal check solo. Took out some of the lows, and also for this one, you have a mid sweep, which is where in the frequency spectrum it's going to affect that mid. So 400 gave it a little bit more warmth, so I boosted it there. Then a DSer is a compressor that is focused on a frequency, and it's normally around like six to eight kilohertz. If you're not familiar with frequencies, I'm going to be talking about that a lot right now. But that's where a lot of the harshness is, a lot of the, the P's and T's, the sibilance in your vocals. So this helped a little bit to take away some of that harshness. The next thing I use is the FBK compressor. It's all right, and I cranked up the squeeze, and this gives it that more punchy sound. Hello, vocal check solo. So it brings it out in the mix a little bit more. The next is a driver. Now I have 0.1 drive, so that's the lowest setting of this distortion. And the reason I did that is just because it gives a little bit more edge and I think it just spices things up. Check it out. Hello, vocal check solo. Oh no, where'd the beat go? Bring it back. And then a little bit of reverb to overcome the sound of this room. The reverb makes it sound bigger in that it wasn't recorded in this in this little studio of mine. Hello, vocal check solo. Then the last thing I added was a graphic EQ. And honestly, you could use an EQ or a compressor or a DSer in any order. It doesn't have to be this way. I mix very creatively. So if I hear something that I don't like, I'll use the tool or plugin that will help me get rid of it. If I hear something and I want to change it, I'll use whatever I want to get that desired result. And there's really no particular order. Of course, there's some basics. I normally start with an EQ, get rid of some muddiness or whatever, some of the boxy sounding frequencies, and then maybe I'll compress it. 
from there, it's just kind of open just to whatever sounds good. And I'm sorry, that may not be the answer that you want. You probably want a cut and dry way to do things. And there's people that certainly believe that there are, but I don't think there is because it's all subjective to what the sound that you want is, the way the vocals sound, how much coffee I've drank, uh, what I ate for breakfast, like what I want to do for the rest of my life. So the last thing I added was this graphic EQ and I just toned it a little bit more. Hello, vocal check solo. And it's not perfect. The more I listen to it, the more I want to change. And sometimes you just got to roll with it. Then I made another preset, which is just kind of a variant, enhance and echo. Hello, vocal check solo. So instead of a reverb, I just used a little bit of echo and it sounds cool too. So that's, that's really it. Just use your ears and make more music. Hello, vocal check solo. Oh no. Where'd the beat go? Bring it back. New track on Band Lab, getting levels on point. You on it, dropping knowledge for the whole joint. Easily I equalize, the truth is in the balance. You sing, you rap, open the app and use it. Ha! 2020 getting lit. Make more music is the mission to accomplish. The mountain we will summit. No boundaries, tell your story through the frequencies. Hit record and follow me. Oh yeah, <laughs> that one felt good and it's gonna sound a whole lot better than the smartphone microphone. I have the vocal right here. New track on band lab, getting levels on point. Now I wanna walk you through just some principles that are I think fundamental to mixing vocals. Things that I don't think people would argue with much. They're just known and they work. Like I said, easily I equalize. So we're gonna start with an equalizer. And we have the graphic EQ in BandLab that gives us the most amount of customizability. One thing to do with an EQ where you can scan through the frequencies is just boost a certain frequency and hear how it sounds, because if it sounds bad, then you can take it away. New track on band lab, getting levels on point. You on it, 200 is a little muddy, so I think I'll lower that. 400 hertz has some good warmth to it. I think it's a little harsh, up around 6,000 hertz. So I'm gonna turn that down just a bit. Search for things that sound bad and take them away, leaving the frequencies or the tone that's most desired. Moving on to compression, because really, those are the two things that I think are most important when it comes to getting a vocal to sound pleasing, punchy, and professional. There's a few different compressors in BandLab and I think it's just important to experiment with them and see what works for you. New track on BandLab, getting levels on point. You on it, dropping knowledge for the whole joint. Easily I equalize, the truth is in the balance. You sing, you rap, open the app and use it. Ha! 2020 getting lit. New track on band lab, getting levels on point. You on it, dropping knowledge for the whole joint. I think that sounds good. And if you don't know the details of how compression works, it's something to just grin and bear it and figure it out. Because compression, in my opinion, is the thing that brings it all together. When you put vocals on a beat and it sounds like the beat is over here and the vocals are over here, I think compression is the thing that gives it that sound of oneness and tightness that just makes it sound professional. Of course, there's some other things that you can do. Saturation is a great way to get a little bit more of the upper harmonic frequency, buzz and sparkle. There's different distortion that you can use and like I did in the first one on the smartphone microphone, you can just add a hint of distortion and it's gonna give you that vintage overdriven sound or just that more aggressive sound. And then delay, as opposed to reverb, can give you some good sound as well. I already did that in the first one, but just to hear how it sounds on this, let's check it out. So that's obviously too much. You can lower the feedback, which is how many times it repeats, and then the mix is the amount that you actually hear between the dry vocal and the wet affected vocal sound. New track on band lab, getting levels on point. You on it, dropping knowledge for the whole joint. 2020 getting lit. I don't even say lit. I don't know why I said getting lit. It just seemed appropriate for this. Another thing that I like about the filter echo is that you can lower the cutoff so the echo is not as bright um, and it lets the main vocal 
be the focus. New track on Band Lab, getting levels on point. You on it, dropping knowledge for the whole joint. Let's hear how that sounds with the beat. I think we're on to something. New track on Band Lab, getting levels on point. You on it, dropping knowledge for the whole joint. Easily I equalize the truth is in the balance. You sing, you rap, open the Of course, this is all my opinion. It's very important to remember. And there's so many different ways and techniques to do it and we could talk about it for days. So to keep this video short, I think, I think I'm just gonna jam out to what I have here and continue to make more music. What's that? What's that? Oh, the, the backpack? Yeah, no, this thing, is, this thing is awesome. Yeah, actually, this is the one that BandLab sent me. They, they own Mono that makes this amazing beat maker, producer, backpack. I did a video on it. You can check it out right here. See this orange accent? They made it just for me. 